two more terrifying true submissions. I was maybe six or seven years old, living in my comfortable home on the outskirts of Indianapolis, Indiana. It was just me, my two siblings, my parents, and our cat. During our time living there, my parents had always gotten into arguments. They were usually about money or who was cooking that night, or random stuff like that. It was normal for my siblings and I, but it wasn't until they got into their big fight that the strange stuff started to happen. You see, my mom is a really selfish and manipulative woman. Every time someone ever blames her for anything, she's able to somehow turn the tables back on them so she's no longer the one in the wrong. This happened one night. My dad came home around 7pm and he had just finished unloading a cargo plane and reloading it, so you can imagine he was pretty tired. He tried to point out that he didn't feel up to cooking that night because he was so tired, and my mom accused him of being lazy and a slacker, and you can see how this would build up. Well, one thing led to another, and by the end of the evening, my parents were screaming so loud I was worried that our neighbors would call the police. My brother and I, let's call him Jackson, sat on our bunk bed waiting for someone to give in and finally cook dinner when I felt a cold hand on my back. I quickly turned around to see who touched me, but there was just a wall. I had asked Jackson if he felt anything, or if he was the one who touched me, but he said he hadn't felt anything, or even moved for that matter. With me being so young at the time, you can see how this would be very frightening for me. Well, moving a little forward in time, about three weeks, my parents had finally calmed down a little, and nothing crazy had happened since the last big fight. But one night, late at night as I was sleeping, I was awoken by something. To this day, I don't know what had woken me up, but I know I did not feel safe in my own bed. The entire house was pitch black, and my cat was off asleep somewhere, so it was completely quiet. I felt as if someone was in the room with me, and they did not want me there. Now, I'm scared of a lot of things, but nothing could compare to what happened that night. As I was sitting in my bed, I felt a cold breath on my ear, and then a deep male's voice whisper, Are you ready? I froze. My brother could never have said that because not only was he on the top bunk, but his voice wasn't that deep. And my parents were asleep when I woke up. Knowing all of this, I knew it had to be some sort of spirit or entity. I may have been young, but I knew something was off about that house. And whatever I felt like was watching me all those years, it definitely did not like me. After that incident, things just began to spiral out of control from there. I constantly began to feel as if I was being watched no matter where I went in the house. It was no longer just the occasional feeling of a cold hand. Now, cold spots would randomly appear everywhere around me, and nothing ever happened to any of my other family members, so I felt like I was losing my mind. Whenever I tried to tell them, they would always just say, Oh, you're just imagining things, honey. Or, you're just trying to get attention. It was maddening. Things kept up like this for five years straight. I thought I could just learn to live with it, until one day it went from bad to worse. I started finding notes for me in my room. Little pieces of paper with horrible scratchy handwriting saying awful things like, Get out or I'll kill you. I was a bit older now and better at research, so I finally decided I needed to get to the bottom of it. I searched the house's history on the internet, and what I found, I won't lie, it shocked me. It was apparently built in 1962, and it used to be the house of someone who was suspected to be a cultist. The man, we'll call him John, I really don't want people digging into my child home and making a mess of things. Anyway, John would always leave the house once a week and come back with a small animal only for him to kill it in a sacrifice. He hated children, especially little girls. 
He died in the house from a shootout between him and the police, and he was confirmed dead in my own room. I had always been scared to death of that house, and I finally knew why. I was being tormented by a vengeful cultist who had died violently with so much hatred in his heart, and he wanted to lash out at someone. Things did eventually get better, though. My mom and dad divorced, and my dad remarried, a much nicer woman, and we moved out into a new home. And I have never had to experience anything like that ever since. I just really hope that the next people who move into that old house don't have any children. I don't want anyone else to experience that. I've always been fascinated with the paranormal. From a young age, I started watching paranormal investigation shows on TV. Now that I look back on some of them, they were obviously fake. I always used to think I would see zombies in the living room out of the corner of my eyes, and silly things like that. Thanks, Lost Tapes. My first true paranormal experience didn't happen until I was around 10, and at that time, I didn't realize what had really happened. One night, around 10 to 11 p.m., I know this because there was no light under my door, so my grandparents were in bed. I was asleep and under my covers. I slept under them due to being scared of my closet. It was at this time when I felt the pressure of someone sitting on the end of my bed next to my feet. Thinking this was one of my grandparents, I looked up from under the covers, but I saw no one was there. Only the indentation of someone sitting on my bed. My reaction to this, which still honestly befuddles me to this day, was to go right back under the covers as quickly as I could, as if that would magically make things better. In my own defense, however, in my terrified 10-year-old mind, I simply rationalized that it was indeed my grandmother coming to check on me, it was just too dark for me to see her. But even this, however, would have been odd because she had never really done anything like that before. But I suppose it could have made sense at the time. Anyways, after going back under the covers, nothing else happened, and eventually the pressure went away, and I went back to sleep. However, the next morning I did ask my grandmother if she had been in my room that night, and of course, she said she hadn't. Many, many other things have happened to me up until now, but I'll just tell you one more experience to keep things short. Two days ago, Saturday, I was in my computer room listening to creepypastas, and before you say, no, they didn't scare me into thinking this happened, I've been listening to creepypastas for so long, they don't even phase me anymore, I just find them entertaining. Suddenly, I heard a loud bang coming from my room across the hall, like a door being slammed. The reason I knew for sure that this had really happened and I wasn't just hearing things was because my parakeet, Romeo, started flipping out. He flew around his cage like he does when he gets startled, so I knew he had heard it too. I called out for my grandmother to see if she had done it, but I got no response. So I stepped outside to ask my grandpa where she was, and he said she was in her garden shed. Okay, so here's when I really started to get freaked out, and I eventually just went back inside and told them what had happened. This was a big mistake. Being devout, old-fashioned Christians like they are, they always brushed things like this off and said there was no such thing as ghosts. They simply didn't believe in them. Well, a few hours later, I was in the same spot, drawing and such, when I heard another sound. I have to stress how specific this sound is to really make it believable. We have a sunroom, a room with all windows at the end of our house, and the flooring in there is this soft, rubber-like material. The reason the sound was so distinct to me was because of the type of chairs we have out there that have rubber padding on the bottom of them, so they wouldn't scratch the floor. This is a sound I've heard my entire life. Every time someone pulls out a chair or pushes it in, it makes this exact sound. Well, the second I heard it, I got up to go look. None of them were moving. They seemed perfectly untouched. I told my grandfather this as well, and he rationalized it as just a bush rubbing the windows. I just nodded and acted relieved, but I know what I heard. I know that sound, and I know the sound of a bush. 
By now, I was ready to nope out of my own house, but instead, I burned a white candle and went into the rooms that have been active and recited a banishing spell. Nothing has happened since, and honestly, I just really hope it stays that way. Thanks for watching, and before you go, here's a special shout out to my patrons who donated $20 or more. Tyler Spooks, Alice Gutierrez, Kura, and Simon Lavergier Delisle. Thanks so much, you guys! If you're interested in becoming a patron and helping me to keep YouTube creepy, please feel free to check out the link in the card.